Perfect. So um, this paper uh, uh, will focus on a, on a few logi in the, the comedy in which Dante compares uh, Florence to a human body, uh, the harm uh, or illness of which stand for corruption and flaws affecting the city as a policy, polity. Uh, medical al allegories of the body politic uh, are relatively common in scholastic literature of the 13th and 14th centuries. Um, they ultimately stem uh, from works of Plato and Aristotle, echoed by the vast Greek, Arabic, and Latin uh, corpora of their interpreters. Um, I would like to suggest uh, here a, a philosophical interpretation of some of these references in the comedy to Florence as a human body, uh, which have been mostly seen as expressing a moral condemnation uh, of greed in the city. Um, as I will show, uh, the similes devised by Dante uh, do not uh, um, state plainly or and univocally uh, what the ultimate, uh, to quote Paradise 1668, uh, the ultimate source of the ills in the city. The organic uh, and medical analogies that Dante employs in the poem in relation to Florence hint at a diverse range of failures uh, of the modern city. Uh, but these failings uh, have probably a more fundamental unifying uh, ideological origin. Uh, it almost goes without saying that uh, despite the central role uh, played by self-governing towns, uh, such as Comuni, uh, Signorie, and Maritime Republics in medieval Italy, uh, Dante's reflection on the city appears to be mostly of a moral kind rather than a philosophical one. Uh, contrary to his uh, theological political uh, reflection on the salvific uh, uh, functions of the empire uh, monarchia, he does not refer to the city as a body politic. He mentions and often condemns concrete cities uh, and their inhabitants. Um, as many medieval philosophers, from uh, Thomas Aquinas uh, to Marsilius of Padua, uh, Dante seems uh, uh, to imply that uh, the virtuous uh, functions of the polis have been historically inherited uh, by the monarchia, empire, or kingdom, rather than the città. Uh, Florence, uh, even more than uh, any other Italian city, is instead a symbol of greed and degeneration and the object of in invectives uh, and anathemas. The only significant uh, instance in which uh, the poem offers an image of Florence as a virtuous city is in Paradise uh, 15, uh, in the heaven of Mars, in which Dante, the character, encounters his uh, legendary ancestors, uh, Cacciaguida. Uh, many modern uh, commentators of the canto have highlighted that uh, Cacciaguida's Florence uh, is mythical uh, and reflects uh, literary topoi. It is not meant to be a historically truthful uh, depiction of the city. Uh, it rather works as a backcloth uh, against which the degeneration of uh, Florence at Dante's time stands out. And yet, it is precisely in relation uh, to contemporary Florence, um, a reverse image of Cacciaguida's to quote him, a pure, sober, and chaste one, that in the following canto, uh, Paradiso 16, a line 67, uh, 72, uh, we find one of the few medical analogies of the city in the whole comedy. Um, and uh, I, I see here, so uh, on the right side, you have the Italian, you should see the Italian original. And on the right, on the left side, the, a mix of uh, English translations, um, uh, mainly uh, uh, Darling uh, Martinez. Uh, so um, I perhaps gonna read the Italian. Um, Sempre la confusion delle persone principio fu del mal della cittade come del vostro il cibo che sappone, e cieco toro più avaccio cade che il cieco agnello, 
e molte volte taglia più e meglio una che le cinque spade. Uh, now I would like to move. Oh, sorry. Um, critics have uh, noted uh, the highly gnomic uh, character of the opening sentence and the three uh, following similes. Uh, the cohesiveness of the first tercets, terzina, is worthy, though a close examination. Uh, sempre la confusione delle persone principio fu del mal della cittade, come del vostro il cibo che sappone. The mixing together uh, of uh, persons has always been the origin of harm to the city, as to you the food that is added on. Uh, the opening adverb sempre, always, ever, uh, marks the theoretical nature of the statement. It is not, uh, I have to turn the page, just about Florence. Uh, the principle applies to the city in general, la cittade. La confusione delle persone, an expression that has been uh, uh, rendered in English as the mingling of the populations, uh, this is Mandelbaum, or the mixing together of persons, Darling Martinez, but perhaps could also mean a, a thought of the last few days, a bustle of people is the principio, uh, beginning, origin, but also root cause of the mal de la città, the, the ill harm of the city. Then it follows an explanatory simile, in which the medical allegory of the body politic is further expanded. As to you, uh, uh, um, living humans, uh, which is uh, something we have to kind of uh, um, uh, bring out, it's not, it's not in the text, uh, the food that adds on uh, implicit in the stomach. So it is uh, to be noted that uh, current editions uh, of the comedy, um, Petrocchi, uh, Sanguinetti, make uh, the underlying metaphor of the body politic uh, less evident than other readings of uh, verse 67, preferred by many early readers, uh, from Jacopo della Lana to Cristoforo Landino, but even uh, uh, um, uh, interpreter of the last centuries were sticking to another reading of uh, verse 67. For instance, in two of the three manuscripts of the comedy copied by Boccaccio, uh, we find uh, uh, come del corpo il cibo che sapone, as uh, to the body, the food that is added on. Um, the two manuscripts uh, are Firenze Biblioteca uh, Richard, Ricardiana 1035 e Toledo Archivio, uh, Archivi Biblioteca Capitulares Celada uh, 1046. Um, so corpo in place of vostro uh, makes the meaning of the simile immediate and transparent. The body politic metaphor is explicit. On the contrary, numerous implicit terms need to be spelled out to clarify the meaning of vostro. So as implicit, the origin of your implicit harm, implicit is the food that is added on implicit in the stomach. Yet, uh, Petrocchi, uh, Lectio Difficilio, encounters today universal consensus, and it is not my intention to argue against it. So uh, early readers, as well as modern scholarship, agree uh, on the broadly Aristotelian and scholastic character of the principle uttered here by Cacciaguida. In this regard, commentators uh, uh, cite passages from Aristotle's politics, as well from uh, Thomas Aquinas and uh, Gilles of Rome. Yet yeah, the three similes uh, presented by Cacciaguida in these two tercets remain ambiguous because they hint a slightly different causes of feel to the city, uh, end of quote. On the one hand, uh, uh, there is the mixing of different classes of people as the source of degeneration. 
on the other, there is uh, uh, the issue of the city's defense, uh, which seems to be better provided uh, by a small and humble yet a distinctly bounded polity ver uh, versus 71, 72. Cacciaguida probably suggests here that a town five times smaller than 14th century Florence would be better guarded by its virtuous citizens than a bigger frantic one, uh, uh, Paradise 1648. Is it the issue highlighted here, uh, overpopulation and urban drift, or is it the mixing of people from different backgrounds and social classes? It would be tempting, but uh, perhaps uh, misleading uh, to interpret the word uh, confusion uh, at uh, verse uh, 67, uh, along with others such as the antithetic terms uh, mista pura, mixed pure, with the lenses of 21st century readers who are familiar with the exclusionary political language. Is it is this passage to be more uh, explicit about a miscegenation or is it about the need for a hierarchical subordination of the countryside to the city? To these different nuances, the line 69 adds a reference to the food piling up in the stomach. The simile evokes images of gluttony, greed, and can also be read as a reference to the city's consumeristic culture typical of mercantile society. Nicholas Haverly has insightfully discussed the significance, uh, and here I would like to turn, okay, the significance of the semantic field of hunger as a political metaphor in this and other references to Florence in the comedy. Um, gluttony as a scene is obviously central to the comedy, more in general, infernal contrapassers that you can see in the slide, I hope, um, often entail dreadful images of ingestion, but Dante's damnation of the Toscan city is rarely about uh, overindulgence and overconsumption of food and drinking. Corporeal metaphors associated to food and eating are often in the point metaphors of greed, rapacity, territorial expansionism, to envy and self-destructive appetite for gains and power to partisan divisions. In philosophical terms, it is the pleonexia, the extreme greed for wealth and material possessions. For instance, in Purgatory 20, 73-75, the soul of the French king, Hugh Capet, conjures another degrading personification of Florence as a body politic. By synecdoche, the city becomes a belly, pancha, which Charles de Valois blows up. If a Fiorenza fa scopiar la pancha. Uh, and uh, here start a, starts a quote from Benvenuto da Imola. And this comparison is very suitable because at, the at that time, Florence was very large, corpulenta in Latin, packed with citizens, swollen with pride. Benvenuto also helps signal a connection between these tercets and Inferno 28, the count of uh, schismatics, schismatics, in which the belly of Maometto is split open by a sword, sword. It is another image of division, schism, inflicted on the unity of the Christian body politic. Yet another uh, political, uh, sorry, another uh, medical analogy uh, of Florence as a sick body in the comedy, brings some additional insight on the ultimate, uh, uh, quote, origin of fields to the city, end of quote. In Cato VI of the Purgatory, uh, Dante pronounces a famous apostrophe that begins with the words, uh, I serve Italia. The invective is sparked in Dante by witnesses witnessing the warm embrace between Virgil and the soul of a troubadour, Sordello, hearing from Virgilio the, quote, uh, sweet name of Mantua, terra land, in which both poets were born, causes sudden joy in the letter in uh, uh, Virgil, uh, in, sorry, in Sordello. 
uh, for a few terse uh, tersets, Dante, uh, um, Dante's digression moves away from the happiness of the uh, municipal scene to ideally addressing Italy, represented in the words of the poet as a wretched woman. Uh, from the idyllic particularism of a city, Dante moves to the sorrow of a destitute homeland. Yet, in the last part of the digression, as you remember, Dante returns to Italian cities. Um, sorry, here uh, there was a, a, a selection of cities, but uh, okay. Um, Yet in the last part of the digression, that returns to Italian cities ruled by peasant tyrants before uh, directing his harshness toward Florence. In the last few lines of the canto, the city is compared to, and I think you can see here the, the quote, uh, compared to a sick woman uh, who finds uh, no rest on her feather bed, but shields her pain by tossing and turning. Um, here, I would like to focus on this uh, restlessness, turning this eternal sort of change of position and movement of this restless body, uh, sick body. Something would, uh, we could say something about the representation of the city as a woman, but it's uh, sort of uh, implicit perhaps also to the gender of the word uh, città, cittade in Italian. Uh, the nature of the restlessness experienced uh, by the city is described uh, in uh, the previous uh, uh, terz, uh, terzina. And perhaps we can read them together. Um, Atene la cedemona che fenno l'antiche leggi e furon si civili, fecero al viver bene un picciol cenno verso di te che dai tanto sottili provvedimenti che a mezzo novembre non giugne quel che tu d'ottobre fili. Quante volte del tempo che rimembra e legge, moneta, ufficio e costume hai tu mutato e renovate membre? Athens and Lacedemons, uh, sorry, here I have to try to move... Uh, which made the ancient laws and were so civilized made but a little gesture toward right living next to you who make so many subtle provisions that what you spin in October does not reach to mid-November. How many times in the period that you remember have you changed laws, coins, offices and customs and renewed your member members? The ill of contemporary Florence stands out in the sarcastic comparison with the past of uh, um, uh, Greek, uh, Greek cities. The word membre, membre, members, but also limbs uh, in rhyme at line uh, 147 reinforces and prepares the image of the city as the body of a sick woman. Uh, organic and medical analogies are common in the language of medieval political thought. Uh, they belonged in the same family with the Greek Arabic offshoots of Platonic and Aristotelian traditions. For instance, it would be, uh, it's something I will not do here, but it would be uh, stimulating to refer to the work of Abu Nasr al-Farabi, an Islamic philosopher of the 10th century uh, CE. Uh, this author was not part of uh, Dante's uh, library, and this is a reason uh, for a, a comparison, exactly because he, he, he wasn't part of Dante's library. Uh, because he uh, embodies uh, Arabic Islamic precedence of scholastic thought. Some scholars have tested uh, insightful uh, uh, readings of Dante's political thought on the backdrop of Al Farabi's Neoplatonism. In Al Farabi's famous treatise, the, you, you saw the uh, um, uh, the title uh, of the in, one of the English editions um, um, on the virtuous cities, uh, Kitab Ahl Al Madina Al Fadila. The reader would easily find uh, examples of medical uh, metaphors of the body body politic. To uh, just uh, mention one of the many 
in the treaty, you could read at the beginning of uh, what is uh, signed as the paragraph four, the excellent city, al Medina al-Fadila, resembles the perfect and healthy body. On the right side, you have it, al-Badan at-Tam as-Sahih. Um, this comparison uh, would not um, aim at identifying Al-Farabi as a di direct source of Dante, but rather to bring the, uh, to light a neoplatonism, a neoplatonic aspect of Dante's political thought, imagine, in political imagination when we read the Monarchia. Yet, um, a crucial uh, difference between uh, the two authors is that while in Al-Farabi, the city, al Medina, uh, can uh, function as a virtuous body politic. He, he refers to al Medina uh, as exactly the, what we could call a, a cittade in Dante. Um, in Dante, the Callipolis, Pla Plato's perfect body, uh, per a perfect uh, body politic, is never a city, uh, with the exception, of course, of Rome that is the empire's uh, seat. Uh, what prevents modern cities uh, from being virtuous self-governing communities is not corruption. This is an, uh, what we could call perhaps an epiphenomenon. No? It, it is not the, confu the confusion uh, brought about by newcomers uh, who recently moved into the city from rural areas or by the greed of uneducated peasant. The inadequacy of the city to reach perfection uh, has, uh, this is my uh, uh, little suggestion, has theoretical foundations. Uh, the city are uh, at the mercy of change, which is the point that Cacciaguida makes uh, um, across Cantos 15 and 16 repeatedly uh, when he talks about uh, uh, decadence of the cities, the città di termine anno, but also the changing nature of language. The uh, Caccia Guida is talking in a vernacular that is sweet, but it's different from uh, uh, Dante's and in the change of uh, the uh, families who goes uh, who ha um, have periods of success and then disappear the, the change of people living in the city the expansion of the city and uh, if we remember the quote uh, from the purgatory the fact that uh, this restless body changing coins laws uh, members uh, all the time uh, cities uh, le città di termine anno, cities have uh, their end. And, and here uh, I'm uh, uh, kind of drawing uh, temporary conclusions and I would like to, to hear feedbacks on, on a subject on which I'm, I'm not a specialist. The very success of Florence, uh, the Florentine that uh, Cambia e Merca changes money and trade, so the mercantile nature of the city is in itself a, a sign of continuous change, is connected to the endless transformation to which uh, the city and its members capitulate, instead of accepting the stable rule of a superior body politic, perhaps the empire. The city is at the mercy of mutation and uh, fortuna. And the disdain expressed by Cacciaguida toward peasant families who recently moved uh, here, another sign of uh, change uh, into the city to make money, should be interpreted in light of this fundamental issue. The upheaval brought about by them is a manifestation rather than the root cause of illness in the city. The arrogant merchant Florence of Dante's time is a place of transformation and instability uh, at which we look uh, with, uh, with pride nowadays uh, in contrast to a monarchia grantor of stability and uh, of that measure of happiness, uh, a beatitudo attainable in, on earth. It is not just about the moral condemnation of the corruption of modern city life, the argument that Dante perhaps is making is about the city as a body politically unfit uh, for the attainment of the Beatitudo Uius Vitae. 
uh, the, the happiness uh, of this life. And here I uh, end my uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you.